Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys uh, some containers that I've been designing. And so um, they're going to be based off of uh, the icosahedron. So there's many different ways in, you, if, uh, in which you can bring in the icosahedron, uh, but uh, you can use any of them. Um, so for now, I'll just bring this in and then I'll give it a specific size. So let me zoom in here. So this one is actually a mesh. Let's see which other icosahedrons we have here. Platonic one. So this one's actually going to be um, a B rep. Let's see. So let's see if we can join this together. Join. Huh. For some reason, it says invalid B rep. And then here, let's see. Here. And then Weaverbird also has it. So the one that I uh, created the, with last time was the Weaver Bird one, but you can use any one of these. Um, so I'll take this one and I'll give it a radius. So I'll say 50. Sorry, my dog is snoring down here. Give me a second. Okay, so now I'll plug in the radius into here. And you can tell that we can't see the edges. So to get the edges, we'll go to face and then we'll go uh, face boundaries. So we'll plug that into here. Now we can see the face boundaries. Now what we want to do is we also want to do a boundary surface. That way we can turn it into a B rep. And then we'll take these, it'll click, and then we'll disable the preview. And now we have all of these services that we can join together with B rep join. And we basically created the solid icosahedron. Cool. So um, now that we have this, I wanted to um, create some points that we extrude out. So to do that, we'll take the surfaces and we'll get the area. And we'll get the center point there. And then we'll move it perpendicular to the space. So let's move the centroid in which direction perpendicular so we're going to go to an amplitude and we're going to go perpendicular to all of these surfaces and then we'll plug that into the vector and now we can give it an amplitude so let's go ahead and say um, five cool so here we go we have the centroids that were moved out in this fashion. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and take all of these and extrude them to that point. So let's go to the command extrude to point. And to what point? We're going to go to this point. And what's going to be the base? Well, we can plug in the surfaces or we can plug in the boundaries. I would do the boundaries that way. It doesn't close the geometry completely. And let me show you what I mean. If I were to extrude the surfaces, which are going to be these, it'll actually create a bottom to them. If I just extrude the boundaries, it'll do just the outside. So this, I'll hide it. Now we have the ability to take that and push in and out that pattern. So basically subdividing it further. So this gives us that ability. And now that we have that created, we can take those extrusions and join them together. So we'll go to BRF join and plug that into there. And then we'll make sure to flatten it. So when we take a look here, we have one close BRF that we can basically disable the preview and now we have a really cool subdivided geometry here. So at this point what I can do is take this and trim off the top that way I can basically um, create the inside of the container. So I'll take this and I'll go to a I'll create a bounding box around it and what I want to do is I want to pick the top and bottom face of it, but I'll just stick to just picking the top. So I'll go to deconstruct view, deconstruct view rep, and I'll plug in this box right into here. 
and now that I have those I want to pick just the top so I'll go to list item and what list item does is it allows you to pick one of those bases and if uh, you don't really know how this works but I do have some tutorials that go over how this component works and we'll see that we picked actually this face but um, every time you bring in a box and you do faces if you do reverse you always get the top one so that's just a little trick that comes with a bit of experience um, and then now we have this that we could basically uh, trim off the top so we'll go extrude we'll move this one we'll do that plane and we're going to extrude it in the z direction but we want to extrude it down so we'll go negative here Now I can plug this into this one and I can give it a specific value. So I'll say 20 for now. Now it extrudes it down a value of 20 and we can use that to subtract uh, from the overall form. So we'll take this and we'll take this one and we'll do a solid difference. So I'll go here to diff, solid difference and I'll take the overall form and I'll plug that into A. A is what you want to keep and then B is going to be our box. So now I can take these, middle click and disable preview. And now we basically trimmed off the top of it. The next step is going to be to make it hollow on the inside. And the easiest and quickest way to do that is going to be to take, let's see, we're going to take this original B rep and we're going to make it smaller. So how are we going to do that? We're going to copy all of this and we're going to create another new B rep. But this B rep is going to have a radius that's going to be smaller. So we're going to bring in a minus component but we're going to say 50 minus 3 millimeters it's going to equal 47 so we'll plug in that for the radius now that we have these two solids intersecting we can go here and type in solid intersection or solid difference so we're going to do that again we're going to have solid difference now this outer form that we want to keep and subtract the inside portion. And now when we hide all of this stuff we can see that we have a hollow container here. And this is going to be perfectly parametric which you could always come here and make the cup bigger or smaller depending on exactly what size you want. And if you have a hard time seeing it, I'm going to uh, bring in a custom preview where we can plug this into here and then bring in a swatch. And change the color a bit. And so this is uh, a variation of kind of the containers that I've been creating. Um, and so I just wanted to show you guys with this simple script how you could get to a pretty cool container that you could 3D print um, and you can share uh, and even sell on online. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions or if you enjoyed the tutorial, let me know. Uh, and if you have ideas for future videos, also let me know. So uh, I hope to see you next time and thank you for watching.